I'm Bobby and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make a video game prop that's also a welding helmet. Today we've got a really interesting project that is sponsored by PUBG Mobile, which is one of the most played games in the world. They've got over 600 million downloads and that's like a tenth of the population of the earth, I think. It's crazy. It's a really fun game where you are one of 100 people dropped into an island where you get to scavenge for weapons and vehicles and basically it's a winner take all showdown. It's a ton of fun. For the second anniversary of PUBG Mobile, they've released a whole new amusement park mode. It's got arcade games where you can unlock special achievements and rewards and to celebrate that, they asked me to make a prop from the game. So we're going to make the level 3 helmet, which is kind of the highest protection you can get, but instead of just making a simple prop, I want to make a functional welding helmet. I did a little googling and found a helmet that I think is actually the base for the helmet in the game. This one was purchased from Amazon for about 40 bucks, and it's ABS, it's made for playing airsoft, but I think it's gonna work great for this application. We're gonna have to make some changes to it. If you wanted to start from scratch, of course you could, but at 40 bucks, why bother? So what we really need to do here is build the visor that goes around this. And for that, we're gonna use a piece of plexiglass. It should work fine against the welding sparks. We're gonna cut this down, bend it into shape, and then we can use that as a platform to make the whole viewport on. You can cut plexiglass with pretty much any saw blade, but there are special blades made for acrylic and for plastic. I got one of these and I haven't gotten to try it out yet, so we're gonna give it a shot. That was the first time I've ever used that blade and it was awesome. Normally, the acrylic will bounce across the blade as it's cutting, it's really loud, kind of makes a big mess and ends up with kind of a chipped cut. But this piece went across totally cleanly and it has a perfectly smooth cut. I highly recommend getting a dedicated acrylic or plastics blade. I started to use a heat gun for that and it would totally work, it will just take time and it's kind of hard to get a whole lot of this heated at the same time so you have an even bend. But I remembered that I have a powder coating oven, which is essentially just a toaster oven. So if you have an old toaster oven that you can use in your shop, not for food anymore, you could put something like this in there, heat it up just enough till it's soft, and then take it out, hold it into place while it cools. I'm lucky enough to have a life cast of myself from a previous video, but you could use any sort of a mannequin head for this. At this point, we've got the rough shape from the oven, but there's a lot of details that need to be cleaned up. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount it to these connection points by drilling some holes. Then we can use the heat gun to target the areas that need to be modified and get them straightened out. I did some tests and found that a normal drill bit actually had a tendency to shatter the plexiglass. Oh. Using a step bit going really slow seems to work just fine. I've got the outside shape mapped out on this. Now, of course, this is already curved and this would be much easier to do if it were flat. So if you wanted to go that route, you could make a template first out of cardboard or something like that. I wanted to go ahead and get the bend. I'm gonna try to cut this on the bandsaw and go really slow. Hopefully it won't shatter, but there is a possibility. That actually went a lot better than I thought it was going to, which is really great. And so now I'm gonna put this back onto the helmet and then use the heat gun to heat these corners. These corners need to be bent back in just a little bit. It's gonna be easier to do that just on a small section rather than on the entire thing.
Next up, I've got to make the actual visor part that sticks off here. Now this follows the same curve, but it's pushed forward. And luckily I have this off cut that I just got from the bandsaw, and I can use this as a template to help figure out the piece that goes on the top and on the bottom. Then I can make a front panel and make a visor. This one, unfortunately, is a little bit too thin to be the visor, but it's great for making a template. I realize that working on plexiglass is probably a little hard for you to see. I'm just using it because it was already here. It's scrap, and it's gonna work pretty well for this. I took the curvature of this and traced it on the outside up against the top and one side. Then I measured down the depth of the visor area that I want and traced it again. So this piece theoretically should be the top of the visor. I'm gonna make a mirrored piece of this one for the bottom, and then we'll make the actual cover that goes across where the visor crosses the eyes. That kind of worked, but the problem is that this doesn't have anything holding it into shape, so it's bounced back a little bit. So when I cut that out, it didn't really match up with the curvature. There's some gaps and stuff. Now you could fill that if you wanted to, but then I remembered an old trick from art school using a flexible curve. This is just a piece of plastic or rubber with a metal wire on the inside of it. So you can take this and bend it around the shape that you want, and then as long as you're careful, you can lift it off that shape and lay it down on something and trace it. I've got that curve copied here, and then I found the center of it, roughly the center of it, based on the two endpoints, finding the center of that, and then drawing a perpendicular line down. This is gonna be the back part that touches the face shield, but looking at the pictures, the front edge is actually a little bit different curve. So what I'm gonna use here is a compass, and instead of going from the center point of the whole thing and connecting around, that would just give me an even curve, I'm actually gonna move back down the center line and then touch my outside corner. And so when you drag this around, it's gonna get smaller in the middle and then kind of flare back out to catch over here. It's gonna be kind of hard to see and it's really, really subtle, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it. You'll see what I mean. It may look like they're the same line, but if you measure out here between the two points, there's an inch and a half. And then in the middle between those two points, there's just over an inch. So it makes it a little bit thinner here just to match the look of the reference images I found. Now that we've got this one cut, I'm just gonna lay it down on the plexi, trace the outside of it and make a matching one for the bottom. I've used some really thin styrene to make this front piece, and that's because it bends really easily. You can cut it with a utility knife. And so that's gonna be handy because I actually have to cut out the inside section here where the lens is gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that out, cut out that center section, and then we'll glue it onto the frame. I took that curved piece that we cut off the chin area and trimmed it down a little bit, and it's actually gonna fit right in here as the lens. But we can't put that on until last because this all needs to get painted first. And to figure out where this goes, we actually need to put it on here and measure out the area. Then in this clear section below it, we need to cut out an area and put in the welding lens. Now that welding lens is only five and a quarter inches long, so I can't cut out more than that area. So I need to find the center of this first, and then mark out half that distance on each side and cut an area out for the lens.
I would prefer to be able to put this lens in after everything else is done, but unfortunately that's just not really going to work with the order of operation. So I think I'm going to go ahead and glue this in place and then mask it off from the front. That way I can glue this entire assembly onto the helmet, finish making it, and then paint the entire thing at one time, then take off that final mask. So I'm going to go ahead and get this glued in place and then we'll move on with the other details. This thing's starting to look kind of cool even though it's kind of weird because it's clear. But there are some details that we need to make really quickly. There's a clip piece that goes right here. There's some blocks that go on the back. And we're going to make all those by stacking up some pieces of styrene and gluing them together, then gluing them on. After we get those in place, we can go to paint. I've got some of these detail pieces ready, but some of them need some little grommets that stick out some details. And then up here on the side of the mask, we also need a couple of those details. For that, we're gonna use these furniture nails. Now these have kind of a rounded top, but then a little steel spike that we're just gonna clip off and then we can glue these on in place. We got this thing put together and we're still waiting for the welding visor to come in to install. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and weather it. And for that, I'm gonna use some silver Sharpie, some rub and buff and some washes just to try to make the whole thing look like beat up metal. The weathering is all done. Now the last thing is to make this into a functional welding helmet. Of course you don't have to do that if you just want to prop. I wanted to try that out. So I got this polycarbonate lens and this is actually a replacement that would go in a welding helmet. Now I got polycarbonate because I wanted to be able to soften it and bend it to fit in the curve of this. So we're going to put this back in the oven, soften it up and then bend it to fit right in that place. So here it is, it's all completed. Now obviously, as a welding helmet, you need the lens to protect your eyes, but you also need the rest of the helmet to protect your face, both from the UV and from the flying sparks. So in this case, your chin's really gonna be exposed. If you were to weld in this for a long time, you would definitely wanna wear a bandana or something to cover your chin. So I'm gonna find a bandana to wear, and then we're gonna go test this thing out. Here it is, the final helmet. Huge thanks to PUBG Mobile for sponsoring this video and making this possible. You should definitely check out the game. It's a lot of fun, and even though I'm really bad at video games, I'm really enjoying it. Hit the link down in the description. You can download it for free, and maybe I will see you out there on the battlefield. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may want to check out, and if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that and hit the bell, and that will let you know every time we upload a new video. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. 
Cool. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. I just glued my finger to the knife.